Hey guys, Steve here. Today's message is titled, The Lost, The Last, and The Least. And many of Jesus' parables are about the lost, the last, and the least. A lighter with no fuel, a straw with which you can't drink. He calls them the lost, the last, and the least. But he says, the lost will be found, the last will be first. The least of these seeds will move a mountain. Jesus will not throw you away. He will not toss you aside. Even when you're bruised, he will not break you. You feel like your life is no more a great testimony. He will not put you aside. He loves you. So these kind of people are where the favor of God is attracted the favor of God is not attracted to man's strength, man's wealth, or man's goodness. It is attracted to where there is weakness, it can manifest as strength. Where there is sickness, it can manifest as healing. Where there is poverty, it can manifest as supply. The prodigal son is a wonderful illustration of how God forgives the least. The son was at rock bottom. He had taken all of his money. He had taken his portion of his father's money and gone into a, another country and was leading the wild life. In the parable, when the son returns, the father does the following acts of affection. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am lo no longer worthy to be called your son. The father didn't even pay attention to the son's apologies. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. That sounds amazing. Regarding the lost sheep, what does he do? What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. That's an example of you. Lays you on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. And what does it show us that repenting is here? Because it does say over one sinner who repents. It shows us the sheep had gotten lost on its own and then consented after being found to have everything done for him. It does not say the sheep, the lost sheep, had to repent of his sin. And then the last, and this story is in Matthew 19, and this is the Passion, passion Translation. But many who push themselves to be first will find themselves last, and those who are willing to be last will find themselves to be first. And it says, and that's from Matthew 19, 30. Matthew 20, 30, it says, The landowner replied, Friends, I'm not being unfair. I'm doing exactly what I said. Didn't you agree to work for the standard wage? And what that is referring to, you had people who were hired early in the morning and they were sweating all day. And then there were people who were hired late in the day. And when they were called together, the ones that were hired in the morning thought, oh, he's going to pay us a lot more. But no, he paid them the same thing. Eternal life. It's, it's an example of the reward of salvation and eternal life. 
And remember, salvation is the word soteria. That means not only eternal life, but everything we need in this world and in the next eternal life. Now, remember, a bruised reed, Jesus said, a bruised reed will he not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice and victories, and in his name Gentiles will trust. And a bruised reed is kind of like a broken straw, if we put it in a modern uh, perspective. A smoking flax is like a lighter. You flick lighters before and they're out of fluid. Things that we would throw away when they quit working. <laughs> Things that we would throw away when they quit working. However, Jesus says he will not discard these things. If, he com if we compared people to these items, we would say they have outgrown their usefulness. Jesus says, when we feel lost, last, or least, he will not discard us. Remember, the favor of God is not attracted to man's strength, man's wealth, or man's goodness. That's not to say that he can't use that, but it is attracted to where there is weakness, it can manifest as strength. Where there is sickness, it can manifest as healing. Where there is poverty, it can manifest as supply. That is God's great love for you, that no matter how insignificant we feel, and I think we all go through times of feeling insignificant, he says, I will not discard, I will not discard a broken straw. I will not discard a lighter that won't light. When we feel useless, he still sees great usefulness in us and we are right where he can manifest his greatness through us so you guys have a have a great day this is steve bye bye